Hi folks, it's good to be with you. We're continuing our series on creation. And uh, is Adam a real person? I hope it's been a blessing to you. And we'll continue to discuss some of the issues concerning this. Uh, my website's jasonburspreacher.com. You can get me on Facebook and Twitter. And I hope this series uh, has been a help to you and a blessing to you. I want to talk about uh, the implications of taking the view that, that Genesis 1, 2 and 3 is historical, why it's important to do that, as opposed to the allegorical view that Adam is not a real person. The implication is, if, if Adam is not a real person, then sin didn't really come in. If sin didn't really come in, then Jesus didn't need to die for sinners. It's as simple as that. The poetical allegorical view it lays the axe to true Christianity. You see, true Christianity is a historical faith, and that separates it from other religions. It's rooted in history. So it's important to defend Genesis 1, 2, and 3 because it's part of uh, the foundation of Christianity, which is history. Jesus was a real person, and it's historical. He really lived, he really died, he really rose again. So Christianity is rooted in history, the history of the Jewish people coming out of uh, Egypt. Uh, we have that history, the history of the kings and the prophets. So Christianity is not uh, a hairy fairy religion. It's rooted in real life and real history. And so this poetical view, come allegorical view that that. Um, Adam is not a real person, flies against what true Christianity is, which is a historical faith. You could read uh, Gresham Machen, uh, The Life of Christ, or What is Faith? Uh, if you read Gresham Machen's What is Faith, that will help you on the issue of history. So, this allegorical view flies against what real Christianity is, which Christianity is rooted in history. Secondly, the historical view puts God on the throne. You see, if God has created the world, and it's clear that God has done it, then God gets the glory, and man is obligated to God. You read Romans chapter 1. So it's important. I've just got an itch there. It's important because the creation of Kant basically gives God the glory and gives man the obligation to worship God and to follow the commands and dictates of what God has given. So the allegorical view and the poetical view weakens that. It weakens that position of the greatness of God and it weakens the position of man's obligation to God. So it, it, the creation of Kant is so important when it comes to giving God the glory and man's obligation to God. So that's why it's important to defend Genesis 1, 2 and 3 as historical. Now, the issue of, I want to talk about uh, the issue of culture. Why is it that man has come to this conclusion that Genesis 1, 2 and 3 is not historical? Well, Creation accounts, whichever accounts, give a culture its identity and its identity of who, it, who, who that culture is, what that culture is to do, how that culture is to see itself. So you can look at uh, the Maori's creation account, you can look at the um, Indian creation account, the Inca creation account, various Indian tribes in America a any culture, African culture you look at their creation accounts 
and their view and their origins of how they came about helps them to deal with life, helps them to be a community, helps them to understand the afterlife, etc. So your origins, that your 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 origins, your view of origins dictates what your present culture is and how it's to be. Now, this is important because in the Enlightenment, in the time of Immanuel Kant and David Hume, in the Enlightenment, European culture began to see itself as rationalistic. And this was the dominant narrative of uh, European uh, post pre-colonial uh, uh, culture. It saw itself as coming of age and being rational. Now that dovetailed into the 19th century with Charles Darwin. Now Charles Darwin uh, was involved in, in various universities and in those universities there was a a movement towards rationalism and evolution and Charles Darwin Charles Darwin was caught up in this rationalistic f uh, fervor within the universities and so he took on this view of evolution because it was giving him and giving his uh, culture a new identity. And even people like uh, Huxley, one of his friends, saw the value of evolution, that it was a way of crushing the church and bringing in a new cultural identity for Britain. And other intellectuals throughout European culture saw evolution as giving mankind a new cultural identity. And that identity is that we've come of age, we are now rationalistic. And so, it's not science that has proved evolution. It's not science that has proved evolution. What has maintained evolution in our society, in Western civilization, is the desire for modern man to hold on to its cultural identity that it produced from the Enlightenment. And that is, we have come of age and we are rationalistic and we do not need deity. We can stand on our own two feet. And that has been the cultural mandate of modern man from the Enlightenment. And that is why we have evolution today. It is not that we have evolution today based on good science. We have evolution today because... Culturally, we have an identity that we have created for ourselves. And that identity is that we're rationalistic and we've come of age. And we're going to go into the implications of that in the next video. Okay.